Wesley with 22 zines, and I'm finally <laughs> doing my big summer zine haul. So these are all the zines that I have gotten in the last six weeks or so. Um, it's <laughs> Initially I was just going to do it like all the zines that I got in July for International Zine Month, and then some of them you know, I tried to decide, okay, the ones that actually arrived in July, but then I ended up getting a whole bunch of them at the end of July, and it seemed weird not to include them, but some of the ones that I got in July, you know, that actually arrived in July, I had purchased in, Zoom, in uh, June, so whatever. This is just going to be summer. This is, like, roughly over the last two months or so, and I'm just going to call it the Summer Zine Haul. I mean, I kind of have to pick some sort of arbitrary cutoff date because... There's always going to be more zines in the mail because I'm doing trades and stuff constantly. Um, but yeah, I suppose another title for this could be The Summer That I Went Completely Fucking Overboard. <laughs> I mean, and you're going to see why. So over the course of these last two months-ish, I uh, ended up purchasing 51 zines with uh, seven books that are like compilations of zines or that are sort of debatable as to whether they actually count as zines. I purchased more books than that, but like <laughs> these are the ones that could sort of fall into this category. Um, I received five zines from zine series that I am uh, subscribed to in some way. I uh, traded, I received 29 zines in trades, and I received a grand total of 72 free zines, and these are physical free zines. I'm not even counting all the digital free zines that I ended up reading. So all of that makes for my dog scratching at the door. So all of that makes for 157 different zines from 49 different creators, uh, which for those who are interested is an average of 3.2 zines per creator. And <laughs> So, um, basically, <laughs> that's a shit ton of zines. Um, uh, what I'm gonna do <laughs> is I'm gonna go through them very rapid fire. Probably not, I'm not gonna talk about each one very much because we'd be here for fucking hours and I also have not had the opportunity to read all of them yet. So, what I'm just gonna do is, like, show them off. I'm not going to do links or anything below because, you know, that would also take a million years, but if you are interested in any of these zines or they, you know, pique your curiosity, I highly recommend that you pause the video and search for the zine um, as soon as I mention it. <laughs> um, and if you need any help in locating a particular zine, let me know, and, uh, or, you know, if you are interested in a particular zine you want me to talk more about it later, then let me know. But for now, let's just start this big old roundup. I'm going to start with zines that I'm subscribed to, meaning that I am guaranteed to get them every month or so. Um, these three I got from the Wiggle Bird Mailing Club on Patreon. Uh, this is the June uh, zine, Sarah and the Cave Rainbow. This was the July zine, The Layman's Guide to Witches of Home and Garden. And this is the Augustine Heaven Must Be Missing a Flat Screen. I'm also subscribed to Thrifty Times, uh, and this is number 55 that arrived in July, I want to say. And I got uh, Fiddler's Green, Gods of the Afternoon, which is issue something, uh, volume 2, number 3, whatever issue that is. Um, so I also received that. <laughs> And because it's the next smallest category and these take up a lot of room, I'm just going to quickly show off the seven books that could probably fall into the zine category in one way or another that I received. So this is Telegram, which is a collection of 27 issues of a per zine. And I heard about this through Dawn's YouTube channel, which I can't remember the name of, but I will link that below because it is another really awesome zine YouTube channel. This is Strawberry Hills Forever by Vanessa Berry, and actually, I don't remember if this is exactly like a zine, like a compilation of zines, or if it's just that, um, you know, Vanessa Berry, Van Vanessa Berry <laughs> is a prominent zinester, and this is 
a book that they also wrote. So, <laughs> anyway, whatever. It vaguely counts. Starberry Hills Forever. This is um, Bonnie and Collide, which is a comic series. It's a webcomic, uh, or at least a bunch of it is a webcomic, so you can actually read a bunch of this online uh, by Monica Gallagher. And funny story about this one, I actually found Monica's zine um, through my library, which as you probably know if you've watched any of my other channels, is currently curating a zine collection. And uh, the library purchased one of Monica's zines, and I loved it so much that I had to check it out so that I could buy it for myself. And then as I was looking up Monica, I realized that Bonnie and Collide was also created by Monica, which was so amazing because I have seen Bonnie and Collide and I was a big fan of it years ago. And I don't know, it just felt like kismet. So I don't know if this totally counts, but whatever. Again, it's by a zinester. It's a collection of little comic strips. Like, that's zine enough. So uh, Bonnie and Collide 9 to 5 is this uh, collection that I got. And then I got these two books from uh, Dame Darcy along with a zine. Dame Darcy is well known for creating tarot decks, but also has these really amazing pieces of work. They're like, uh, sort of like graphic novel, photos, text, you know, series of short stories. Like, I don't even know what you'd call it, but it's totally awesome. This is hijacks and hijinks, and of course I had to get it. Life's a pitch, and then you live forever. <laughs> so, got this one. <coughs> Excuse me. And I got Gasoline, which is uh, more of that sort of thing. I suppose this is slightly more like an illustrated book, but whatever. Look, it's even in the typewriter font. That totally counts as zine stuff. So <laughs> Gasoline by Dame Darcy is the other book that I got. And the last ones that I got, I literally just got this morning like 10 minutes ago, so I haven't even opened the package, and I'm going to wait on that. Uh, it's, uh, it's Cunning Folk the uh, issues one and two, which is the re-enchantment issue and the water issue, which is basically like this compilation zine slash magazine about, as it says here, magic, mythology, folklore, and the occult. I got this via um, Fiddler's Green, and I'm very excited about it. All right, the next category I'm going to do is zines that I got for free. This was a surprisingly large uh, category with 72 total zines, um, but quite a few of these are from the same creator, so, you know, it's perhaps not as impressive <laughs> when you think of it that way, or not as overwhelming. Anyway, um, the first one that I got, I found a couple of these at a local, uh, whatever you'd call like a metaphysical bookstore, I suppose, um, which seven something. Um, I don't totally remember, but it's like this really cool bookstore that I popped into in Cambridge and I ended up with a bunch of books and found these free zines that were available for pickup. So this is one of them. Queer, a zine for fags, dykes, and ne'er-do-wells, which, you know, was definitely very intriguing. Um, I got Tales, which is sort of like a little occult zine thing. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about them. I just I'm just gonna show them off really quick. Tales. And then okay. I got a couple free zines from um Take Care Zine Distro, which I think by now unfortunately is closed. Um and I got a bunch of zines from them in like a in a closing uh sale. And they included a few free zines with it, one being Plastic Knife, number 17, and It Didn't Exist Yesterday and Today It Does, numbers 2 and 3. And the cool thing about both of those is that I also received other issues of uh, Plastic Knife, at least, from this other pack of free zines. So the vast majority of free zines that I got were from Small Zine Volcano, and I highly recommend that you check them out because all of the zines are free. You just pay shipping. Basically, you um, you send in you you pay for 
however much shipping that you want to pay for, 20 bucks or $10 or whatever it is, and then where for wherever you are in the world. And then they will pack up as many zines as they can fit into a package that will cost that much amount of money to ship. And so that's where the majority of these came from. I got Hoop Delusions... Gertie and the Shalob. Uh, I have many issues of Rutzine, which I thought I had them in order, but whatever. Uh, Rutzine 211, and a whole bunch of these zines titled You. And I will talk about these just really quick as I'm sort of uh, flipping through. Here's some more Rutzine, another You zine. Um, basically, You... I have to say, has completely reinvigorated my love for zines. Here's a, another free zine that I got from the Meatloaf Headache that I have a few uh, titles or a few issues of. Um, and Wednesday Night in Nunhead, a Feed the Animals front fundraising zine in aid of Sticky Institute. And Friday Night in West... Uh, what was this? Ealing? Yeah, West Ealing. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But anyway, I got, like, a huge stack of those, too. Okay, so you, <laughs> Zine, has really, really just... I didn't even realize that I had gotten into a bit of a Zine rut until I got you, and I was so surprised <clears throat> and so shocked by these, where basically all of them are packaged in these little... Um, you know, things that you have to open. You have to physically open them, and it makes it, and they're, you know, have stamps or photographs or things taped to the front, and you have to physically, you know, open this package, and then on the inside, it's basically like a little uh, update letter, I suppose you would say. Some of these are in envelopes, some of these are stapled, some of these are, like, bigger or smaller, and what I really love about it is it sort of um, reminded me how this doesn't have to be so serious, and, you know, I would hardly say that I have a super high quality production value or whatever of my zines, but you is, like, so personal and intimate, where it's literally just, like, a, a, a page or two written on lined paper and photocopied and sent out all over the world, and I feel like I've really gotten to know these people, and it's on so many different topics, and it feels so easy and accessible. So, like, if you've ever felt overwhelmed by making a zine, even the one, you know, because I recognize that even, like, my zines where I try to make them pretty, um, scruffy, <laughs> there's still sort of a lot of work that goes into it. And not that there's not work that goes into this, but it's a different, it's, it feels more like play that goes into this, where it's literally just writing whatever you want, like a diary page, photocopying it, and then stapling, it, and then just like stamping and messing around with the packaging. And I don't know, like I, I was completely enamored by these. I read almost all of them and I had to remind myself to save one so I could show you what it looks like when it's closed. Um, <laughs> and I just tore through the huge stack of, like, 20 of these that I got, and it was totally inspiring, and I ended up trying to make a zine immediately after that, which, you know, didn't come out how I wanted it to, but just, it just reminded me how much of it was the practice. I think one of the zines that I was reading, it was saying that, um, it was saying specifically that the great thing about zines is they could just as easily exist as not exist, and so someone could have just sat down and watched Caddyshack, but they decided to put an hour into making a zine and sharing it with you, which is just a beautiful thing, and I don't know. So <laughs> obviously, like, you zine has really uh, touched me in a way, and I have to write a fan letter to Luke over at you zine. Anyway, here's a couple other free zines that came in that package. I got Guest Informant number one and number twelve. I got another using. This one's a little, you know, packaged a little more traditionally, I suppose. I got, uh, oh, and plastic knife number uh, 17. So I got a couple other <laughs> plastic knife. Um, wait, did I already have number 17? Okay, I guess I now have two copies of 17. So I will totally donate one to the zine library here. Um, but anyway, like, more Plastic Knife, uh, more stuff from Z Small Zine Volcano, 
Um, let's see. I got a couple of these mini zines. This one is Bridges number five. I got Where Are My Teeth? <laughs> Sky Punch zine number two. Um, okay, so I have... Hang on. I'll, I'll come back to these in a sec because I thought that I'd organized all these, but I totally didn't. Um, I got More You, the guitar solo in Hot for Teacher edition of you. <laughs> Carrie Fisher and the Blues Brothers, the bass solo and You Can Call Me Al. I love that song. This is just like a list of, you know, like a to-do list that and and a budget or something. And it's like so cool. They got this little I guess I'm showing that I'm young cuz I don't even know what this is. It looks like one of those things that you slide in, into those uh you know little readers where you you click through them and then you see the images and I don't, I'm not gonna try to describe it. it's gonna take too long to take too long so more you more you like they're so they're so cool and it, I really loved having the kind of interactive element of actually opening it I mean I kind of hated it though because it it, it goes so against how I am used to interacting with zines and how I'm inter used to interacting with books. It's like, you're not supposed to touch it. You're not supposed to damage it. It's You're supposed to preserve it for the future. Like, I'm very gentle with all of my things, you know? Oh, this one I gotta show you. It's a portrait. It's a zine where the words form this portrait. Portrait of a zinester. It's so cool. Um, this one, I feel like... This one I feel like was a joke. <laughs> that the fact that it was included, and it is kind of funny. It's Highway Evangelist, the voice of the Christian truckie. Um, I mean, the zine itself is serious, but you know, as a as an outside reader, I thought it was, you know, no offense, but also kind of some offense <laughs> if you would connect with Highway Evangelist on a deep level. <laughs> anyway, um, so you, I feel like just completely changed my mind and sort of like there was this there was this book that um was really popular when I was in middle school and it was called destroy this book and it had a whole bunch of prompts where you literally like you'd sandwich peanut butter and jelly in there and you'd like flush it down the toilet like I don't even remember it was just like a whole bunch of crap that was you know meant to be prompts to destroy the book and ugh, that made me kind of sick to my stomach <laughs> and but you know this was like a nice gentle step forward of like oh just open something and the zine itself the packaging the cover or whatever you have to break it in a way to get to the zine anyway okay these other ones uh the distance i got this i just found this in a little free library and it's like a little poetry zine which was really cool and then these two were digital zines that I read, and I just loved them so much that I had to print out a copy so that I could have a physical copy. So this is Knowing the Land is Resistance. This is the first issue, and I really want to print the second one when I get the chance. Um, really highly recommend that one. And this one is a zine that has completely changed my life <laughs> and changed my gender, and I went and got a bike after reading this and I have never felt better and it's just like I'm gonna have to do a more detailed talk on this zine because it is completely it has changed my life and I got it from QZAP and of course I loved it so much that I had to download and print it okay that's all the free zines next up are zines that I got in trades and I apologize to anyone who has ever traded with me I guarantee you I am going to forget many of the people who I did these trades with <laughs> or which were exactly yours or someone else's. And I'm really, really sorry about that. Um, just a, a, a little bit of uh, zine overwhelm this summer, as you can probably tell. Uh, so some of these people, I reached out to them on Etsy or via email, or uh, I was part of the Queer Zest Zine Fest Discord for a while and did a lot of trades through that. Um, some people contacted me about trades. So like just, a whole bunch of trades. Really great. These four are little art mini zines by Jam, who I found on Etsy. 
and they're really cool and it's basically like a whole bunch of art of little little back alley kind of spaces and I'm totally into that and now we're kind of zine pen pals because we both make zines that the other one is totally obsessed with which which is great <laughs> so I really loved doing this trade and I really love these mini zines I also feel like I forgot a couple of zines in another box or something that should have been in this what? Okay, okay. I'm not gonna worry about that. This is what it is, okay? I'm cutting it off. It's 157. <laughs> and that's the number. Okay. So, some of these zines I got from Echo, and so they included some mini zines. Uh, Six Reasons I Love You, Do It Yourself Care, number three. Who Does This Benefit? So you support survivors, but don't hold their abusers accountable, which seems really important. And I think I might, when I'm when I'm done reading this, I might either try to buy another copy or uh, donate this one to the zine library just because I feel like it's really important. Are you actually attracted to men, or do you just crave their validation because you live in a patriarchal society? Subtitle: Turns out I was a lesbian all along, and you might be too, <laughs> which is totally cool. And doesn't that totally fit with the uh, "you might be questioning" zine that I was doing, like thematically? Uh, so those are from Echo. These, <sighs> I am so sorry. Whoever traded these, I totally can't remember who traded these. Alex, was were these you? Did you send me these? I am so sorry. Like this is what I'm, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Just zine overwhelm. But I got these three scenes. I got uh, the wagon and me flashback flashbacks from P the plague times, uh, which was a journal. Okay, Alex, I'm like, I'm like sixty percent sure that these are yours. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, the mask emoji and the wagon and me and these are really awesome they've got a bunch of little comics and illustrations which you know i'm totally into that okay i got a cool stack of zines from uh liver mortis zine who actually contacted me here on youtube which was really awesome um which are just these really amazing photography scenes. This one's totally my favorite. Um, I don't remember what the titles of these are because the titles are not listed, but you can find all of them on Liver Mortis. I mean, look at that. That's so friggin' cool. This particular issue has a bunch of photographs from cemeteries, and I just really like it. Um, we got another Liver Mortis. Also, I don't know which one this is. Um, or wait, was this Liver Mortis? Yeah, Li Liver Mortis zine and... Something, something. <laughs> Sorry about all the trucks and stuff. I'm trying to do this in the living room just because it's early and so um, people are asleep and this is really the only way I can do it. <laughs> and I just really had to get all these zines off my desk so I could start actually reading them. Okay, Liver Mortis number five. And um, Shut Up, which I think is also part of Liver Mortis. I don't I don't totally remember photos and layers by Liver Mortis scene, so it's like close enough. <laughs> okay, that was a really fun trade. Really enjoyed that. Here, I totally can't remember if these also were from Liver Mortis or from something else. I should have looked it up or something. I had a bunch of zines that I had to look up where I actually got them from. <laughs> This is what I'm talking about, Zine Overwhelm. Okay, but I got uh, Hopelessly Devoted, which is this really cool little art art zine, and Woskom. Sorry if that's, um, you know, not the right way to say it, and that's Punks Around number five. Um, this one's from, I feel like this is a different Alex than the one I was talking about before, but... Anyway, there you go. <laughs> Alex, Alex Herbert. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I gotta calm down. Okay, the Highgate Eye issue number seven. I got this in a uh, trade that was set up on Twitter by like, uh, uh, like a, it, um, I forgot who organized it, but like they connected you with different zinesters to do trades and that was really awesome and we ended up 
talking for a while and turns out that his grandmother lived in Salem, like the, the zine star I was doing the trade with, <laughs> um, or used to live in Salem. And I don't know, it was just really fun. So the Highgate Eye issue number seven, which is a uh, collaboration zine, South Durham's finest zine for celebrating the absurdities of modern living. Really fun. <laughs> And I believe all the rest of these are... Okay, wait. I'm... This one may... I, I forgot... <laughs> I forgot where I got this one from. This may have had to go earlier, but uh, Sticky is like notes and doodles on Sticky Notes put into a zine. Really fun by Morgan Everly. Okay, and now I think I'm good. Where the rest of these, I'm like pretty sure the rest of these came from Nina who is from Belgium and we had kind of a heck of a time sorry about the trucks <laughs> we had kind of a heck of a time setting up this trade and actually managing to do the mail because of EU stuff but um, I think I'm very excited that we were able to do it anyway and that you know, I just feel like it's so worth it. And I haven't totally had the chance to read all of them, but they're so cool and so pretty. And I was so looking forward to these. So all the ones that Nina sent me, huge package. Um, In Movement, a 24-hour zine about moving and finding a home. Scissors and Chainsaws, number two and uh, number one, which were diary comic zines. And, you know, and Nina's been around for a while. I mean, this one's from 2013, and then the second one's from 2020. So, <laughs> like, they have a big, um, uh, shoot, word, uh, backlog? That's not quite the word, but you know what I mean. They've done zines for a while. Um, same, different world, same heartbeats. Got, let's see, number 13 and 17 which I am so looking forward to this one. Look at this, gender badges. Oh, I have to read that one! Um, and then Confined Parts 1 two, and 2, which were, uh, let's see. Yeah. Lockdown Diary Comic Scene from COVID-19. So these are pretty recent. Really excited about those. And this one, actually, I totally can't remember, Nina, if you sent me this one or if I actually ended up getting this and didn't realize that it was from you because I purchased a bunch of zines from um, this like record store that took zines that I totally can't remember the name of that was in England and I saw this one and I was like oh I assume it's pronounced ing I don't know y-n-g who and it's yingwi or ingwi y-n-g w-i-e it's a it's a fandom about a band that I have never heard of, so this is very appropriate for me. And I figured, like, huh, Ying Hu, I, I guess I should probably take this because I don't know who they are either. About growing a, about growing, a f okay, <laughs> a fanzine about growing up in the '80s queerness fandom and Ingwi Malmstein. And this one is, oh, I got it from Subject Specialist Records. There we go. And this one is from Nina. Like Nina created it, so. Maybe that should have been in the purchase category, but I also can't remember if you sent it to me or not, so whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> so that's the last one that I got in a trade, and I feel like I'm. there are a couple other... I have, like, some trades pending right now, and I have some trades that are still in the mail, but, like, I just had to get this video off my plate. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay. Okay, so now all the zines that I have purchased... I spent kind of an embarrassing amount of money on zines this summer because I was very excited about it. This is the first time that I've uh, tabled at a convention. It's the first, you know, the, the first time that I've really been thoroughly involved in zines over the summer. And, um, I mean, <laughs> plus I had my new job, so I kind of had <laughs> the... I kind of had the money. <laughs> anyway, it's more than I would have liked to have spent, but, you know, they are zines, so I probably spent less than you might imagine. Anyway, we'll start here with uh, Death is a Mean Girl, which is the one that I got from Monica Gallagher of uh, Bonnie and Collide, which is a little comic zine about interpreting death as a 
as a as like a mean girl like from a teen movie and it was such a cool comic and i read it from you know our library purchased a copy for its collection and then i had to get my own just because it's so cool so <laughs> death is a mean girl really like that one and i'll do this one next uh, Kitchen Witch Kit, this is a Dame Darcy zine, and I totally knew when I saw Dame Darcy's tarot decks, it's like, oh, yeah, you're a zinester. I can just tell, and what do you know, Dame Darcy has created this zine about kitchen witchcraft and little folk spells, and I just, you know, had to get it, so <laughs> got that one alongside the books. Okay, I got a bunch of zines from... Uh, My Aim is True, I think that's the name of the zine project. Um, they sent me these cute little teeny tiny mini zines. I think this is officially the smallest zine that I've ever had, which is Be Kind, How to Support LGBTQ Plus Folks. So, really awesome. <laughs> and Hello Ladies. So I got these cute little tiny mini zines. Uh, My Aim is True, I got the scary stuff sort of Halloween edition because of course I did. I got My Aim is True number three, and I got Pieces 6.5 plus My Aim is True number five, which is a split zine, um, which for those who don't know, it's basically you have two zines and you mush them together and you have, you know, two zines that you can read. Two, <coughs> sorry, two, <coughs> sorry. Front to middle and then flip it around and do front to middle on the other side. So. That was really cool. This one, your pretty face is going to straight to hell. I can't remember if I got this from Vampire Hag or if I also got this one. Yeah, I think I did get this from Vampire Hag. So Vampire Hag, um, your pretty face is going straight to hell, number 26. This one, I got a body of work, which is by far one of the coolest covers <laughs> that I've ever seen, where the body moves the arm and the leg and it's so cool and so you, you can sort of pose this this figure on the front and so that's why I had to get it like admittedly I got it just purely for the cover and because the creators were part of the Queers at Scene Fest and so I wanted to support some fellow creators um but it actually ended up being really um deep and like <laughs> like something I wasn't expecting just because I hadn't even looked very closely at it when I got it so it was kind of a nice surprise a body of work I finally picked up every thug is a lady from uh Julia which you know this is sort of Julia's most popular zine I think it turned into like a uh prefect perfect prefect I can never remember which it is but like perfect bound uh book since then but you know, I just wanted the classic zine edition and finally ended up getting that one and it was really important to me. I got a, some of my first zines on gender. I got like a good chunk of zines on gender in June because I realized I really didn't have that many zines on gender because despite being trans, I think I was almost afraid to think too hard about gender. And while I was making my gender zine, I realized like, huh, I really don't have any other gender zines and I haven't, I haven't thought very deeply about this for a long time. And so, you know, getting these gender zines and reading them, this and a few others, um, was really important to me. And so I'm really glad that I did. Um, I'm worried about wine moms. If you were watching, uh, my, uh, International Zine Month series, you'll probably remember when I highlighted the digital version of this, and I just liked it so much that I had to get the, the physical version too, from Beating the Binary. Uh, oh, crap. I should, <laughs> my aim is true too. I forgot to include that in the other ones. Like I said, my, my stack got a little messy. Uh, The Queer Witch Club, issue two, um, and I got this just because I had sort of had the, I'd been wanting to get this for a while. This is the self-care issue and I'd been wanting to get it and just never, I don't know, like I, I sort of gave myself permission <laughs> to get a whole bunch of zines that had been on my wish list or in my favorites lists for a while when I, you know, when it was International Zine Month. I am a camera number 18 and this was Vanessa Berry's, uh, an issue of Vanessa Berry's uh, zine that I got in addition to Strawberry Hills Forever, the book. 
This is just a really sweet little art zine by Mary Doodles, which I think it's just called Inc uh, Witches 2019 Collection. And so it's basically like a collection of illustrated witches from Inktober that I loved so much and uh, got this little seconds one with a soft, you know, regular piece of paper cover instead of a cardstock cover. Um, the Queer Language of Flowers, an incredibly popular zine, and for good reason. I love floriography, I love the language of flowers, and I had the really lovely opportunity to meet, I think, one of the creators? I mean, I met, I met two people, but I can't remember if they both created this or not, um, at Queers at Zine Fest, who are both totally awesome people, and I hope that you got your uh, housing situation I hope I hope that it worked out to your favor if you happen to be watching this, either of you. I got uh, a Book of Rainbows number one and number two, which is a witchcraft themed perzine, and this one is a DIY magical perzine. Uh, also, they had been on my list for a while. And I have something to say, number two, a perzine about queerness, creativity, and being your most amazing self. Um, I also joined a cult over the... Uh, over the summer. I mean, I wouldn't call it a cult. They're, they're sort of misunderstood as a cult, but it's Cult of the Dying Sun, and received a few pieces of literature from them. <laughs> um, Dying Sun Cult, Cult of the Dying Sun, Cult of the Dying Sun, and um, I will be receiving another one very shortly. These two zines are sort of about gender and a whole bunch of other things, like gender inspired perzines, I suppose you'd say. Alien in Disguise, number one and two, and I am so glad that I got these. If you get these, you should totally spring for the color edition, because they're so pretty. Look how fucking stunning this big snake is. It's so cool! Um, so I loved him so much that I ended up sending uh, my gender zines to Z just as kind of like a fan letter almost or just as like a thank you for making your zines i really like them i want to send you mine too these i just got very recently and these again were zines that we had in the uh library collection that i had to get for myself uh wax and wayne by hina luna and uh there's two issues the keeper of the tides and ode to the moon and on earth and color creative musings and the manifesto of a natural dyer so these are really pretty, and I'm really glad to have those. These two um, are the ones that I got from Take Care, like the ones that I purchased from Take Care, and they sent me a few of those free ones also. And uh, these, let me remember what the title is, Refugee Art Project Zine. This is number three, and this is number four. And um, they're basically just like art projects where they, you know, had interviews, I suppose, or just talked to refugees and received, you know, help to put their art together into a zine, and it's just, I don't know, just really nice, really glad to have had those before they had to sadly close down. Um, and then I got a couple of these from, uh, let's see, this is also from Specialist Subject Records. I got Band Basics, Tips and Tricks for Navigating Your New Band. I'm not in a band. <laughs> I really want to start a band at some point. Um, because I know how to play the drums, and I feel like a lot of times finding the drummer is the hardest part. <laughs> and I have a lot of ideas for for bands and what to sing, but you know, for now, I'll just uh, I'll just read zines about it, and then when I'm ready, I have band basics. <laughs> My Tropy Life: How Pop Culture Stereotypes Make Disabled Lives Harder by Annie Carl. This was a, micro a microcosm piece, and just. Yep, just wanted to get that one. I got a few of these zines. Like, one of my absolute favorite zines of all time is The Alchemical Wedding by Brian uh, Cote Noir. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, and I just finally decided they're, frankly, they're a little expensive as zines go, you know, which... Also, Brian lives in an expensive area, so I'm sure that it sort of reflects that, but I decided to splurge and get them because I just loved them so much, and I read the first, you know, the first one is one of my absolute favorites, and so I figured, 
well, I'll read these. And I, I haven't had the chance to actually look at them yet, but I got uh, The Heretic Art or The Alch Alchemy of Talismans on alchemy and the timing of things and on the animation of statues. So I'm very much looking forward to spending a few, so spending some time with those. I got two issues of Autistic Left Wing Queer. I got volume five and volume four. And I got Hard Femme. I got all the current issues, which is one through four. And I, this is another one of those gender zines that really changed my perception of um, gender as not being something so scary and overwhelming to think about. And you'd think, like, as a trans person, gender shouldn't be so scary and overwhelming. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I made that zine that's intentionally trying to get people to explore it and saying how fun it is. And it's like, it is fun. But it's really, it's, you know, it can be intense. And I just really appreciated being able to read some, read some zines about it and just get that, that personal touch, I guess. I don't know if that makes any sense. Anyway, very happy to have those. Um, let's see. I also got, um, psych trauma recovery. So basically like stories and recovering from, uh, trauma from psych psychiatry. Um, and what's really cool about this scene is there's a whole bunch of like stickers and things that are put in there and washi tape and like mini zines that are stapled in there and it's like a very physical you know experience feels like this one of a kind piece and it is this one of a kind piece so just that's really cool and i got a few other ones granny b a tiny zine um i think ignore the number one and things these are just like numbers from my you know this is the first scene that I ordered, this is the second scene that I ordered, but I just thought that they looked so cool that I kind of wanted to keep them on. So, Granny Bee, um, Four Stages of Grief, and uh, Cigarette Smoke and Sunshine. So, those are really cool. Here I got a few zines. Um, the Depressed Waitress is the name of the zine project, and this is, uh, Volume 1, Monsters, a Philosophy Zine. And I'm totally a philosophy person. My, uh, degree, my bachelor's degree is in philosophy, and it underpins a lot of what I do, and so I, of course, I had to get that one. And then just, because it looked neat, and because I like the cover, to be honest, I am not lonely for I have a television, which is also from the Depressed Waitress crew <laughs> a philosophy and art zine by the depressed waitress i don't know if it's one person or if it's a crew but whatever a crew of one <laughs> um this one is oh where did i get this one uh um handmade toledo which is like uh just like a store that it, it's sort of, it's like a little online arts market for things that were made in toledo that also has some zines so i got a bunch of stuff from them I got self-compassion, be kind to yourself instead of striving for bullshit self-esteem. Totally love that title. Um, DIY zines and comics, a sort of high how-to. And I talked a little bit about this one because this is where I learned about, um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, I guess there, there aren't really images or anything, but this is where I learned about Lucy Parsons, which is really cool. Um, Queer Werewolves Destroy Capitalism, an erotic revenge fantasy. <laughs> like, holy shit. Like, this is... <laughs> How could you not buy this? You know what I mean? Um, two more gender zines. I got Hard Femme, and so then when I saw Soft Femme, I feel like, huh, I should probably get these too. And the covers looked interesting, so I got Soft Femme. This is number three, I think, or maybe number one can't remember whatever this issue is and soft femme for post feminism and the last one <laughs> is scapegoats and chandeliers by antonis sideris and i just frankly liked the cover and i believe that this was another person from the queers as scene fest that i wanted to support 
So, um, I think, I think that's it. That is all 157 zines. I have no idea how long this video turned out to be, but, uh, you know, thanks for watching. And again, if you have any questions about particular zines, then let me know. This is probably going to be the largest zine haul that I will ever have for this amount of time. <laughs> And I might do more zine hauls in the future, but they will be much shorter and much smaller. Because, like I said, I went a little bit overboard this, uh, this season. But, um, you know, if you'd like to trade zines, then I am always up <laughs> for that. And, you know, help. You can, you can help contribute to my next zine haul video. <laughs> See if we can break the record of 157 or whatever. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.